Hey, welcome to Eva Studio. My name is Elizabeth. I'm the maker, designer, and teacher. And this is just a quick update of some of the things that I've made and some of the things that I've been working on. So last week, I had the great opportunity to be able to attend a workshop at my local quilt shop, which is Dancing Stitches in Cambridge, Ontario. And this was a workshop um, organized by Bernina Canada. And it was with Tara Sinclair, who is a bag maker and designer. Um, she's also Canadian, but she lives way across the country from me. So it's really unusual that I would be able to attend a workshop with her in my hometown. So we met at Quilt Canada last year and I was excited to meet up with her again and to learn from her in this um, bag workshop. So the project that we did was the Rio Convertible Tote and this is a really fun project. It's a bag that can be used as a handbag or it can open up and be a tote bag or you can wear it as a backpack. So that's why it is convertible. So here is my bag that I was able to finish in the workshop time, but I did something a little bit different. It's all made of this uh, light brown kind of canvas fabric, but on the middle section, I embellished that with hand embroidery. So this is just some sashiko stitching that I did in two colors of pearl cotton. And so I really like the accent that that gives. So here is the handbag version. And then it has a long strap that you can see you could attach it here to wear it as a backpack. But also, if we undo this little thing in the middle, then it opens up to be a, um, a wide tote bag. And it has, here's a long strap so it can be worn um, over the shoulder or even cross body. So this is a really fun project and it was great to take this in a workshop. So on the inside, it has a magnetic snap, which that's the first time I installed a magnetic snap like this. So that was something fun to um, learn. And it has a zipper pocket on the inside. Luckily, I was taking this in a workshop because I almost put my zipper pocket on the bottom of the bag instead of the top of the bag. But Tara was walking by right when I was gonna be pressing it and she's like, ah, your pocket's on the wrong side of your bag. And so I was able to fix that. That's a great part of being in a workshop, but I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm really excited to use this bag. Um, so it's definitely, um, I wouldn't say it's an advanced level pattern. It has clear instructions. Um, and so it's a great pattern to use. And if you ever get a chance to take a workshop with Tara, I would highly recommend it. She is a great teacher. And then something else I just finished is another bag, kind of. Um, this is a little uh, work bag, project bag. And I picked this up as a kit last fall when I was at Quilt Festival in Korea. And when I saw it there as a kit, at first I thought it was a kit to make the whole bag. But then when I bought it, I realized that the bag itself, which has a zipper and has a bunch of internal pockets, that was actually um, pre-made. It was just a bag with a plain cover and that all the kit was for was for basically a little quilt, a little quilted piece that was made and then stitched onto the cover. So that was such a great idea because this inside bag is pretty complicated with the zipper and the pockets and the page for needles. Um, but it was actually a much easier project than that would have been. And it also kind of made me think of some ideas that of other cases and things that I might have, zipper cases or carrying cases, that I could just make a piece and basically applique it onto the cover to make it totally unique. So this has little piecing on here, these little mini blocks, and then this is applique and embroidery. And so this was all done by hand. I um, hand pieced everything, I hand quilted it, and then it has this little handle. So I'm really happy with how this turns out and I'm really happy to have it finished and so I can use it when I'm traveling to classes and workshops. Something else that I just finished, and I do actually have another YouTube video with a tutorial for this, but this is 
a flannel receiving blanket. So if you follow me, you've probably seen lots of things that I've made with Projagi and reversible patchwork. And one really popular thing that I make is window hangings. So those are like window hangings, curtains that hang in the window, and it looks like stained glass. And I teach workshops for that, and I have patterns for that. But I be was beginning to think, what are some things that I could use that technique for besides window hangings? Because that technique is basically patchwork, but it's not quilting. So anytime you want to have patchwork, but you don't want to quilt, this would be a great technique for that. And so thinking about it for using for things like clothing or uh, like tablecloth, things like that, it's a good choice. And so I decided to take some flannel scraps and I put these together to make a receiving blanket. And this is just really adorable. I love how it turns out. It was a quick and easy project. It used up scraps that I already have, but a receiving blanket is also a really practical item for any new mom. This is something it could be like thrown over your shoulder when you're burping or used to wipe up messes. It can be thrown around. It can handle a lot of wear and tear and a lot of laundry. And it's not something that um, a mom would have to feel like more guilty about perhaps if she got a really extravagant quilt, she might be more nervous about using it, but this is something that can handle all the use and wear and tear and it's designed to be used. And so um, I love how this turned out. My younger daughter, when she looked at it, she saw the fabrics and she said, oh, these are all the fabrics from my childhood because that was my pajamas and this was this. And so she recognized a lot of the different fabrics that were used in this. Um, so if you have flannel scraps, this is a, a wonderful project. I have the tutorial you can see. Um, and it's just another way to use scraps in a different way besides just quilting. So that's something that I was really happy with. Uh, the next project is something, it's almost finished, not quite. It's a quilt. I just don't have the binding on it yet. And this is a quilt that I made. It's just a tiny little um, lap quilt. And I made the top back when I was going through traditional quilt blocks and playing with those. And this was a, a rail fence made with just four solid colors. And so you can see it's just a simple rail fence design. But for quilting, I wanted to do something um, different and interesting. So I decided to go with spiral quilting, but I wanted to have four overlapping spirals. So you can see here's a big spiral here, here's another spiral. And it gives a lot of cool texture, especially where they overlap. Now there was a bit of an issue. It was a great learning experience uh, because I decided to pin base this, which normally I spray based, but I decided to pin base it. And the basting was pretty good, but we can see in, for example, in this section, when my spiral is coming up here, it did give a tiny little pleat where this spiral was overlapping the other spiral that was already in there. So we can see that in other places where the spiral start to meet, here's another one here, there is a tiny little pleat in there. So it's not horrible, um, but that is just a problem with the technique because this one you're twisting your quilt all the time and so the basting has to be really, really secure. If you're gonna do spirals with this small of a um, space between the stitching lines and have them overlapping, um, that is just something to be careful of and watch out for. If I had done just one big spiral on the whole quilt, it wouldn't have been an issue. It was only because the stitching was coming across other stitching. And I was trying everything I could think of to avoid, as I was moving it in, I was trying to stretch out the fabric as much as possible, and it was still getting this little pleat there. Um, so I think it's just uh, kind of the basting that I had wasn't um, 100% for this design. And because this design has so much moving of the fabric, 
you need a super, super secure base tank. But I'm still really happy with how this turned out. I'm probably going to give this to somebody or um, donate it somewhere. Um, the back of it has this beautiful um, flannel floral fabric, uh, which was just the right size that I needed and the colors went really well. So I just have to get binding on that and then that will be all finished up. Then I also have my uh, blocks for block of the month. And this year, 2024, what I'm doing for block of the month is I'm taking traditional quilt blocks and embellishing them with hand embroidery. For September, the block was deep blue sea, which is a ship block. And then I've added these clouds and these waves at the bottom. Um, so that was a really fun block to do. And then October, this is the block coming out. This is a cake stand block. So I've taken a traditional cake stand and then I've just embellished all of this stitching on to kind of emphasize a decorated cake. Uh, so if you're following along with Block of the Month or you want this um, Block of the Month pattern, it is available for free for the month of October. And then after that, it will be for sale in my shop. So block of the month has been something that I've really enjoyed doing. And I'm planning ahead for next year, for 2025, I'm gonna do something really different for block of the month. The last two years I've done traditional quilt blocks and then embellished them with hand embroidery. For 2025, I'm not gonna do hand embroidery embellishment on the blocks. And um, it's not necessarily traditional quilt blocks, they're kind of, uh, traditional pieces like they will look pretty traditional but I'm gonna have one quilt pattern overall and then release a block every month for it so I'm working on samples for that so what I have so far the sample I'm doing is in blue light medium dark blue on a white background and I'm really happy with how it's turned turning out so um, be watching for more information about that. If you enjoy Block of the Month projects, then go sign up for my email list because then you'll be the first to hear about this. And also, um, just a little sneak peek or a little uh, spoiler, um, in probably toward the end of October, I'm gonna have a little contest for to help with this block of the month project and you'll be able to win the whole block of the month um, project for free. So sign up for my email list so that you can find out more about that because I'm really excited about how this project's turning out and I have a plan for how it's all gonna go. Then in personal sewing, I am finishing up the a uh, fall table runner that I've been working on. So this is um, using my pattern fill in the blanks, which is a table runner pattern that has these blank squares in the middle. So I'm filling those in with machine embroidery and applique. And yes, they're in two different directions because I have them alternating directions. So as you went down the table, no matter which side you were on, there would be pumpkins facing you. So I'm doing this in scrappy fall colors. So the table runner is finished. I'm just doing the embroidery and then I'll have to do the quilting, but I'm also piecing some placemats to go along with that. Um, and so we'll see how many placemats I get finished. I do have six people in our immediate family and then I would want to have more than that. So I'm not sure exactly how many I'll do, but I'll start with six. And then because they're scrappy, I can always make more to go with it as we go along. So um, hopefully I can get this finished in time for Thanksgiving, which for Canadians is the middle of October. So that's coming up pretty quickly, but I have a lot done, so it shouldn't be too much to finish that. And then I've also been working on this embroidery kit. And this is a kit that I got at Quilt Canada 2023 when it was in Halifax. And it's a kit from and other adventures and it's been um, sitting in my drawer so I thought I should get this out and do it. It's not a really complicated kit uh, but it's just a beautiful little uh, 
set of flowers. I'm doing it a little bit different than the instructions. In the instructions, she says to use um, six strands of embroidery floss, and I did try that, and I didn't really enjoy that as much. I didn't like the chunkiness, so I am using three strands of embroidered floss, so I'm happier with that. But that's the great thing. If you're doing a project, even if it's a kit that has instructions, if it's your project, you can change it up and do whatever you want with it. So I'm happy with how that's turning out and it won't take very long to finish the whole piece. Um, so I should be able to finish that pretty soon. So um, that's what I've been working on. I hope that you enjoy seeing it. Um, as always, if you have any questions about these projects or anything else, feel free to drop a comment below and I will get back to them. So keep on stitching and have a great day.